The other big uh, international story that I know you've been, I think you've interviewed, well, you interviewed Imran Khan mm -hmm. now uh, February of four months ago, was it? In, in, the, in the fall. Something uh, like that, yeah. Uh, Imran Khan, of course, the former uh, prime minister of, of Pakistan, is now in jail. Um, and they just keep generating <laughs> charges against him. <laughs> um, let's start with uh, a couple of days ago. This was, well, I guess this was yesterday. Uh, as the election had started, I mean, I don't, I don't, uh, or, yeah, the election had started at, at that point. Um, here you are asking um, State Department spokesman uh, Vendan Patel um, about the reports of voting interference. And we should say, Imran Khan's um, uh, party, the PTI, was essentially uh, outlawed. Uh, right. And so you, uh, all of these member, former members of this party ran as independents, um, but presumably everyone knew they were former PTI. Right. Right. But, uh, so I just want to make that clear. And there were a lot of reports that the election was being um, manipulated in different areas uh, around Pakistan, uh, which led you, uh, Tylus, I noticed, and I apologize for that, um, uh, to ask this question of uh, Vendan Patel. On, on Pakistan, thank you for taking the question. So, so far, the preliminary results have Imran Khan's party, I think, at this point, with leading in 136 districts. That's three times the next closest one. You're now seeing reports in Pakistan of, of two separate things. Uh, one, the army is in the streets, the police are in the streets, they're surrounding polling stations, and you're seeing a lot of reports and videos of efforts to change the votes. They're kicking election officials out. There's a lot of concern that that number 136 by tomorrow morning in Pakistan could be pushed down lower. Separately, you're seeing also uh, surface in, in Pakistan an attempt by the kind of military-connected uh, uh, officials to take the independents who are associated with PTI and pressure them to join other parties. So even though Imran Khan's party might win a majority after torture and bribery, you could have a different government take power. So you've from the podium stood up for free and fair elections but free and fair elections are one thing but if you torture your way to a majority after that that doesn't quite that doesn't quite live up to kind of the values that you were stating from there so this seems like a pretty pivotal moment for Look, Ryan, america and the and pakistan relations Look, so, Ryan, the thing about preliminary uh results is that they are uh preliminary and uh i am not going to get ahead of any official results and so i'm not going to uh, comment or speculate further on what uh, a government could look like what the makeup could be or anything like that so you would what be I okay just, if, what, what i will just reiterate again yeah. is that we condemn uh all instances of election related violence even <laughs> some of the kinds that you are describing uh that took place in the weeks preceding the election as well as on election day. We also believe that these kinds of actions have affected a number of political parties across uh, Pakistan. And we're also concerned about the steps that were taken to restrict freedom of expression, specifically around internet and cell phone use. But again, I'm just not going uh, to speculate like, on results or government makeup. But, let, but let's say the Pakistani people do elect a majority of independents associated with the PTI, but then after a bunch of backroom negotiations which are accompanied by reports of torture all of a sudden there's another candidate that has a majority would that be okay with the united I'm states i'm not gonna i'm not gonna uh, you can't say that wouldn't be okay with the united on, states i'm not gonna hypothesize on a made-up uh, situation that you're just describing right now we will at there some are, point i have no doubt that the united states of america will comment on the election official election results when they happen but till then um uh we will defer to the uh, uh electoral process <laughs> we believe uh, we take very seriously. So, uh, Ryan, give us a uh, follow up. And I mean, he, he, you know, he uh, sort of even addressed the second part of your their second question, I guess, which is, uh, what if all of these independents get elected and then they are systematically um, encouraged to mm -hmm. change their party affiliation? Uh, under duress. I mean, it's not like there hasn't been, there's a lot of questions about the uh, charges against Imran Khan. And mm -hmm. so uh, it's not like there isn't a model for, you know, 
right. if they can put Imran Khan in jail, let's put it this way, uh, so easily, it's not uh, inconceivable that uh, there there is enough of um, a leverage point with these individuals. Where where are we in both the vote counting and like what you're hearing about the the second scenario? Well, it's it's getting wild. Uh, the Pakistan, the military backed government did not see this happening. And so as a result, we can actually see this deal happening in, in real time because the TV broadcasters um, were airing results as they were certified in real time. And so at every polling place, there'd be this thing called a Form 45 and they both parties would stamp it and then you'd get to take the form back. And then it would go to the television broadcasters and they then they're adding them up and they're telling the Pakistani public, wow, look at this in hundred like and now it's over hundred like 176 constituencies. The PTI candidate is is way ahead. And the so then the problem for the army came. What do we do now that this information is out there? And so overnight you started seeing these incredible shifts in the numbers. When it moved from the you know aggregating all the polling places to the final constituency level, you had you've had a couple of famous cases where the candidate one candidate had won by fifty thousand votes, and let's say they had eighty five thousand. In one case, the candidate had eighty five thousand votes and had won by fifty thousand. The next morning, that candidate now had seventy two thousand votes, like had actually lost votes as they counted the final one percent, and the candidate who had lost all of a sudden collected another 60,000 votes and they declare the, and they declare that person a winner. So they're doing that all over the country. But uh, because it was already on television and though, and those screenshots and videos are now circulating around Pakistan, you're seeing like a significant pushback and the state department to their credit about an hour ago, uh, put out a pretty good statement um, that said, we've seen all this BS and and what, one of the key lines was that you know this you know this fraud needs to be investigated and the key line was um you know the state we are prepared to work with um any political party re you know regardless of you know basically whether we like them or not um and that the the will of the democrat the will of the pakistani people needs to be um needs to be respected it was if you were the kind of the pakistani establishment and nawaz sharif the military i think you did not like that that state department statement because it's obvious the state department doesn't have to say we're, we're prepared to work with any political party because it's obvious they're prepared to work with the military backed parties i think that's what we've always done there so i'm just say that this fraud needs to be investigated and we'll work with anybody and the will of the people needs to be respected i think has struck some real fear into the army which um you know, uh, really didn't see, didn't, didn't, didn't think that this would get so out of hand so quickly. You're going to steal an election. It's got to be much closer. Like you got, you, you can't, it's very hard to steal a landslide when the landslide is already being broadcast on TV. You, if it's 10% in and it's super close and they also shut the internet down, which is hilarious. Right. On the day and, of the, and, of and the voting, service. right? After yep. promising that they wouldn't, they did it. Um, but because the whole po the whole population knows what happened, um, they're going to have to use just absolute brute force at this point. They're not going to be able to use kind of chicanery and and manipulation. It, it will require also brute force, which doesn't mean they won't do it. Uh, New York Times, meanwhile, uh, the story that was up a few hours ago was still calling Nawaz Sharif the front runner, um, which is hilarious. It was just utterly hilarious. Like even the official results that have been published so far, I think there's. They've they've called sixty seats for uh, Imran Khan's party and like forty for Nawaz Sharif's. So even the rigged ones that have trickled out have Imran Khan's party uh, in the lead. So it's the New York Times is just like we were told that the military wins every election, so we're just going to run with that until. Were you otherwise. surprised? Were you surprised by these? You know, uh, to the extent that we can sort of like assess what the real election results were. Yes, were you surprised by that? Yes, because, like you said, they basically banned the party. Uh, a huge portion of the electorate can't read, and so they they would vote based on these symbols. And the symbol of the PTI was a cricket bat for Imran Khan, this famous cricketer, and they took his symbol away. Um, and so many candidates uh, were abducted and then tortured and then 
emerged from torture and said that they were withdrawing from the race. And then a new candidate would come in. Um, and, and party workers were arrested, like thousands of them. So I did assume that the, that this, that the level of repression coupled with shutting down the internet and all these other weird manipulations would be enough um, to suppress their vote low enough that then they could you know, steal it comfortably. Uh, but the polls had been showing that something like 70% of the public supported Imran Khan's party. And so it uh, apparently at some level, there's just nothing you can do, um, you know, short of like a bloodbath to hold back, you know, that level of democratic will. So and, and to be clear, just so that we, that people understand, this is a parliamentary system. So right. the party in the, that, that can form a government. And I think it's like somewhere between 150 and like 166. Is that what it is that it that, takes that's about what it would take? Yeah. Uh, to, to form a government in the, uh, Pakistani, uh, parliament, um, then presumably they would vote for, uh, they would, you know, nominate and appoint the prime minister, uh, essentially, right. or, or vote within their, uh, their caucus as it were, I guess. Right. Uh, just so that people understand how this, this works, uh, there, um, when, like, how does this, um, how does this what's the timeline for something like this? I mean, when will we get a sense of, of the, the army successfully created a new outcome of the election or they have basically just given up the ghost on like pretending that the election came out this way and just basically say like, uh, just trust us on this. And we're not, you know, yeah. we're not going to go through the whole counting thing. Just trust us. It's almost midnight there now. And so uh, I think we'll know more, in the morning, uh, Nawaz Sharif already came out and gave a, a victory speech, which was pretty roundly ridiculed. Because, like I said, he's got something like 40, um, 40 declared wins, and those are all almost all of those are you know pretty heavily contested. So we should know a lot more by tomorrow. Um, hopefully, this ho there's a there's a lot of pressure on Sharif to just say, look, what are you gonna, what are you going to do? Like, you're really going to take power under these conditions? Like, and and if you do. Like, how are you going to be able to govern? Like, you so obviously have no mandate. You know, just just do the right thing, and gracefully accept defeat here, and then work and and work something out here, rather than, um, you know, what could also happen would be just intense amounts of violence in the street. You already had, uh, I believe it was in in Lahore, um, four PTI workers were uh, were killed, including like a fourteen year old boy by, um, you know, it, so it could get quite ugly. Um, so there's a and I think, but the U.S. is trying to prevent it from getting ugly because if you, long term, like even if you could like grab power here, like what's what's your play long term, um, if if you're going to both say that you respect democracy, but also want to kind of put in place, put into power a party that clear, that has something like fifteen or twenty percent of the of the public's support, like you, that's not sustainable long term. Has Khan said anything, or is he basically in in communicado at this point? In in communicado, um, as far as I can tell, and he can't be immediate. He can't be prime minister immediately anyway, because you have to be a member of the parliament, um, and obviously he'd have to get out of prison too. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a pretty shocking um, upset. But upset implies that they're going to win. It's right. a, it's a shocking um, show of force.